Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I would like to discuss the way that I deal with holiday gift buying, and uh, this is probably not the, the right thing you're supposed to be saying as a, I hate this word, but influencer, which let's, and once you get over a million subscribers, it's hard to say that I'm, I, I really despise that word, but usually you, you tend to encourage people to buy all sorts of different products and services, even if you haven't used them, rather than encourage people to do the exact opposite. This is not something I think I could even do if I wanted to. I don't think that my audience would uh, would, would believe it because the way that I live my life and spend money is very, very sparingly. I am not somebody who, you know, buys a bunch of uh, random crap. You may think some of the things that I own, I don't like a set of Vandersteen speakers or something like that is unnecessary or silly. But at the end of the day, I, I really make very, very few um, high-end purchases or go into debt for them. And I don't suggest that other people go into debt to make these types of purchases. And, then, and we'll discuss that later in the video. But over here, it says that one in three Americans overspent during the holidays, boosting credit card balances. This is not something I like to see. It says Americans went all out this holiday, spending much more than the year before, and in some cases, more than they could afford. Roughly one third of shoppers went more than $1,000 into debt, according to a report, which I see as insane. By many measures, 2021 saw a record-spending holiday season despite ongoing supply chain problems, inflation, and a new COVID-19 variant. Holiday sales are on track to grow as much as 11.5% over 2020, according to a projection by the National Retail Federation. About 30% of Americans said they overspent during the gift-giving season, according to a post-holiday survey by WalletHub. Although Omicron drove a new wave of infections, more than half, or 56%, said COVID did not affect their plans, the survey found. For most shoppers, increasing their spending also meant relying more on credit cards, or buy now, pay later financing to spread out their expenses. As a result, roughly 36% of consumers went into debt, owing an average of $1,249, according to a separate survey by LendingTree. Buy now, pay later has exploded in popularity with the rise in online shopping during the pandemic. However, studies show installment buying could encourage consumers to spend more than they could afford. Although these programs let shoppers break their purchases into equal payments, often interest-free, there could be late fees, deferred interest, or other penalties if you miss a payment. Credit cards, on the other hand, are one of the most expensive ways to borrow, with interest rates of more than 16% on average. And I, I honestly, I'm, I'm kind of too sick at this point to even bother reading the rest of the article. So there's a few things that I wanted to go over here. The first thing is that when it comes to buy now, pay later schemes, uh, and I do call them schemes for a reason, I've had people come to my store or call me or email me and say, you know, these are different ways that your customers could get the repair now and pay later. And the primary method that is utilized to sell these services to me is consumer behavior. What they say is that a consumer tends to spend more money when they're spending it on a credit card than when they're using cash or when they're using a scheme that allows them to separate it out into payments over time, even if it's interest free. So even if the customer is not paying more because it's interest free, in their mind, the way they make decisions, they may make decisions that are less conservative and ultimately at the end of the day, more than what they need or decisions that don't make sense if they are able to buy now, pay later. That's the way this is sold to me, the business owner, when they're saying this is a type of method you should accept for payments. So I'm confident that they've done some sort of research to understand that that is the way consumer behavior works, and, which is why it makes me sick to see that these schemes are becoming more and more popular. But more importantly, when it comes to how I deal with uh, purchasing gifts for the holiday season, I, I don't. I don't buy gifts uh, for anybody. Like last Christmas, Erica did not buy me anything and I did not buy her anything. We spent time together. We enjoyed the time that we spent together. We smiled, we enjoyed our day, but I didn't buy her anything and she didn't buy me anything. My friends, my acquaintances, all of those, I didn't buy them anything and they don't buy me anything. I give them the gift of not having to stress out about spending money on me and what to spend, and they give me in turn the gift of being able to feel guilt-free that I did not spend money on them arbitrarily and buy them something that they did not need. Now, when it comes to my business, we do give Christmas bonuses every year, and this this is separate than giving gifts to people who are friends. And uh, you know, admittedly, it was less this year than it was when I wasn't over forty thousand dollars in debt to my landlord because I made a stupid business decision. But I digress. Yeah, that that's separate from this type of thing. Like if you wanna go out and enjoy the evening or you're friends with other people and you would like to enjoy the holiday because you work all year, that's one thing. We, we did go out this year around uh, New Year's. We went to a steakhouse and bar and uh, we, you know, we, had, we had some fun. But 
I didn't go out thinking, okay, I know 30 people, I need to buy something for each person on this list. And I'm not at a point where I would have to go into debt to do that. I'm, you know, I'm lucky enough at this point in my life that if I wanted to buy gifts for 20 people, I could do that without going into debt. But I most certainly would not do that if it meant actually going into debt. The people that I know in my life, they want me to be financially secure, and I want them to be financially secure. Part of being a good friend to the people that I know is letting them know, I would rather you put that money into your 401k, into an index fund, into your savings account, into paying off your mortgage, than buying me some stupid fucking knickknack that you don't even know if I'm going to like. I may not even like it. So then I have to pretend I like it or tell you I don't like it and be an asshole. And I like having people in my life that don't care about this. Now, uh, this year I did, you know, Erica has a really horrible computer. So I, uh, and because the, uh, the city of New York City has a garbage government, they're not able to explain to me, they haven't responded to my email or voicemail in eight months, by the way, they're incapable of explaining to me how it is their law works. So I no longer sell computers in the front of my store. I got rid of that license because it's a liability. If they're not capable of explaining this to me, then I'm not capable of doing business in that manner and uh, fuck the city. And so I found a machine that would have otherwise been for sale. And, you know, it was a recycled machine and, uh, you know, it's a present. Now, again, I can understand how somebody would say, how dare you get somebody something recycled as a Christmas gift? But I know who my girlfriend is. This is literally somebody that used to go through dumpsters. I mean, mo when she, she, she gets some shit on her channel from time to time, and it makes me laugh, where she'll say, I like luxurious items, I like luxurious handbags, I like luxurious shoes. And what most people don't realize is that some of the most expensive clothing and shoes she have, I shit you not, she got from going around dumpsters from, wait for it, Project Housing in beds die. Not kidding. She's gotten multi-hundred dollar handbags, super expensive shoes that are in really fucking good conditions, literally going through dumpsters in the projects. Like almost everything she has that is fancy is something that she got for free out of a dumpster. And um, so I know that she would appreciate that as a gift. And I'm not expecting something, you know, in return there. And if I were with someone that said, you got me something recycled as a gift that's used, ew, I would not want them in my life. That would be a sign that I don't, you shouldn't be in my life because you don't want good things for me. I want the people in my life to be debt free, to have no financial anxiety. And I do not want to create a sense of financial anxiety for the people in my life by perpetuating these asinine expectation on them that simply because this is uh, some holiday that you need to purchase me something. Uh, now, there are times that I have gone into debt on the holiday season. There's literally one time I remember this about 10 or 11 years ago. One of my uh, best friends, his, one of his family members who was really, really badly ill was not able and kind of poor, was not able to pay the property tax. And because he hadn't just invested in something for his own business, he wasn't able to do it. So I went into a debt very, very temporarily so that I could pay the property tax so they didn't get kicked out of their house. But that's not something that I considered a gift. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like, I, I'm, not, I'm not buying you, a, I'm not going into debt to buy you a damn PS5. And I've much preferred the life of not having debt for these types of things. Like, again, I don't believe in, uh, you know, I, I don't believe in credit card debt. I don't believe in dealing with car leases versus just buying something that you could afford at the time or waiting until you could afford to buy what you want, what you're looking to buy at the time. Uh, I don't believe in going into debt to buy other people items because of a consumerist holiday. And I think that this is horrible. And again, the way that it messes with your behavior is literally the way that these services are marketed. When people will try to market me on services that would allow me to get the money immediately, but the customer to pay it over three or six months with no interest or blah, 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 the, all, the, at the root of these services, they are based on the concept. They are sold to me on the idea that you will make stupider financial decisions if there is no immediate pain from paying right now. When you take out a credit card and you know, oh, I can just pay for it later even if I don't have the money now, like it does something to your head. And it, it just, it causes people to spend in a manner that they otherwise wouldn't spend. It makes me sick to my stomach to read that there are people that are too broke to be able to pay off a $1,200 credit card immediately that are using that money to buy luxury items for other people. And I wanna be 100% clear here. There is nothing wrong with being broke. I started out in life broke. I started out in life not having much. I was showing up to uh, my jobs with holes in my sweatpants in 2008 and 2009 in Herald Square Park because I couldn't afford an office buying one or two screens at a time. And I would, you know, again, t-shirt and sweats with holes in them. Everybody starts out broke. I'm not shaming you for being broke. What I'm ashamed of is the 
fact that we as a society have glorified the idea that it is okay to go into debt to be consumerist during a holiday season on a schedule. And I think it's important that if you are at that point or that stage in your life, that you not surround yourself with people that are going to encourage, egg on, and even shame you into bad behavior. If somebody looks at you funny or acts passive aggressive or just doesn't call you back because you did not get them a certain gift or you got them something used or handmade, or, some, or, or even just has the expectation of you that it is on you to purchase them something. I don't think that that's somebody that is a healthy person to be around if you are someone who is in debt or someone who is you know, working on your financial journey. When I meet somebody that, you know, and they, bec- oh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out how to put this. Uh, when I'm friends with somebody who says, I am no longer going to lease something that I cannot afford. I'm going to buy a hoopty and deal with that hoopty. I will ride around town with them with a smile on my face, happy. I don't give a shit if we're riding around in a 1987 Honda, if it means that you're going to be able to pay off your mortgage, you're going to pay off your debt, and you are going to lead a lower stress lifestyle. I am happy for you. I am happy when you make decisions that make you uh, more financially secure and more sustainable into the future. And I want to be a part of that happening. And if that means that you don't get me a gift, well, great, let's spend a day together and find a way to have fun that does not include you or I spending any money to do it. There are ways to do that, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, that's about it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.